Welcome to the online worship service at Christ Alone Lutheran Church in Mequon and Thienesville, Wisconsin. We're very glad you joined us today. Give us today our daily bread. Jesus teaches us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Today we have a marvelous reminder of how richly the Lord answers that prayer as we see Jesus and the feeding of the 5,000. God give you a renewed appreciation for his rich bread, both physical and spiritual, from heaven. Let's lift our voices as we join in worshiping God with our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, 
maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your great mercy. Forgive us those things that trouble our conscience and give us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the righteousness and pleadings of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this Sunday, this 11th Sunday in Pentecost, is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 21. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command, and people shouted before him, Make way! Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word no one will lift hand or foot in all Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zephanath paneah and gave him Azanath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, to be his wife. And Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. The Word of the Lord. We sing responsively Psalms 42 and 43.
Our second lesson, the epistle for this day, is from St. Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 4. Just two short verses, verses 4 and 5, and a reminder that this actually anticipates Jesus as he blesses the food in today's gospel lesson. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. The word of the Lord. Let's lift our voices now in singing the hymn of the day, Jesus, Priceless Treasure. Grace to you and peace 
from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We focus our attention this day on the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, the familiar feeding of the 5,000. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves and of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down in the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word we consider. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there's an old phrase in the business world which helps companies and leaders in those companies to stay focused. The simple phrase goes, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Now the phrase may sound a little bit trite or unimpressive, Yet in a world where we're inundated with facts and news and opinions on every side, 24-7, well, it's very easy to get distracted, lose focus on what we're trying to accomplish, and in reality, set ourselves up for failure. Forget the main thing? It'll probably never get done, and will be of no use to you. The phrase, you see, is not just, though, for business world, but for life on this earth and most importantly, for our spiritual life. So today, as we will be blessed by the Holy Spirit, let us remember that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing, knowing that for us, the main thing is Jesus, who knows the main thing that we need for this life and provides both for this life and the life to come. Matthew had just finished recording a number of parables Jesus had used to teach the people who would listen to him. He taught in Nazareth, but, well, he was a hometown boy there, and they didn't accept his teaching. We're told that he didn't do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. At this point, Matthew now reports of events that happened away from Galilee in Judah. We're told of the hideous incident of King Herod, ordering the beheading of John the Baptist. When the news of this reached Jesus, he was troubled, sought to get away from the crowds for a while. We're told that he and his disciples got in a boat and went across to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. The people followed on foot around the sea. The sea of Galilee, we have to understand, is not like, shall we say, Lake Michigan. At its widest, the Sea of Galilee is only about seven miles wide. And because of the mountains surrounding the sea, you can easily see across the Sea of Galilee, even see small boats on the surface. So even though they were crossing by boat and should have been a lot faster, the people met him on the other side. Now, we can't say for certain the whole sequence of events, whether he was able to get away from the crowds or not, but we do know that when he landed... We're told he saw the large crowd gathering and had compassion on them. Now, we have discussed this concept, this word compassion before. In the original, it means going right down to the inner parts, right, right in the guts, you might say. Imagine that while still mourning the death of John the Baptist, it was not about Jesus and his feelings that we see a focus that wasn't the main thing, but the compassion he had for others. In Mark's account, we hear that Jesus saw them as sheep without a shepherd. Wearied and tired from the day, wishing to get away from the crowds, we hear that Jesus had compassion on them and healed their sick. 
Even though the crowd's purpose in being there may have been selfless, may have been self-serving in healing their sicknesses, Jesus shows us how to keep the main thing before them. He did not send them away. As a matter of fact, in John's account, and just a note that unique to telling of Jesus' miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, is that this miracle is recorded in all four Gospels. He asked Philip how they were going to feed such a large crowd of people. Now, the people weren't invited, but Jesus planned to take care of them anyway. And you can only imagine how that preoccupied Philip's thinking for the rest of the afternoon. What are we going to do? Jesus knew the physical needs of the people. He knew that in following him out into the countryside, they had not made plans like one might make for taking a trip, packing supplies, food, and water. Uh, they just followed. We can't be sure how long Jesus taught the people and, and worked with them. But as the day moved on, he also knew that they would need to be fed. But we're told that it was the disciples who decided. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. They saw the people as an intrusion. They saw it was getting late, and their solution was to just send everyone away, fend for themselves. But Jesus said, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. No quick solution here. Jesus said, no, don't send them away. Feed them. But how? Well, as I mentioned, Philip maybe had thought about it all afternoon, at least since Jesus had spoken with him earlier. As far as he was concerned, the main thing would be to find enough food for this great crowd. Using all his resources, he said, it can't be done. Half a year's salary wouldn't cover it. Now, to put that into perspective for us today, the average income in the state of Wisconsin, all depends on what statistics you want to use, is around $52,000. That would mean, if we put in perspective today, if the feeding took place today, from Philip's perspective, they would have needed $26,000 to feed them all. Hey, guess what? 26,000 was not available. Another thought is that, well, maybe they could pool their resources. They came up with five loaves of bread and two fish. <laughs> That's not going to be enough. And there were no all-night McDonald's, Burger Kings, or Wendy's. No Walmart grocery stores, no Metro Marts, no Piggly Wigglies, no Pick and Save Myers or Sendix. Even knowing that the disciples' only solution was to send the people away, but where is compassion in that? Jesus had compassion. He was trying to get them to focus on the main thing, faith. Faith in him. So Jesus said, bring them here to me. That's the bread and the fish. And he directed the people then to sit down in the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. Jesus used the meager supplies that were available, gave thanks that not only were these gifts available, but that his heavenly Father had given him this opportunity and then distributed the food to the people. I doubt they were socially distanced in the grass or that gloves and masks were worn, sanitizer available, or hand-washing stations in place. But... They were fed, and fed to the degree that all were satisfied. No one was hungry. And if they were, it would have been their own fault because there were leftovers, 12 baskets of leftovers that were collected after so that nothing would be wasted. So the thought is, what do we know now? What have we learned? If you remember, we started with the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. So what's the main thing here? Isn't it Jesus? Shouldn't he have been the go-to solution right away rather than an afterthought? The main thing of every miracle of Jesus was always to prove that he was the Son of God. Yet the uniqueness of each miracle also showed the Lord's compassion, his love, a love that meets all the needs, both physical and spiritual. The main thing is that we trust in him, 
during the most difficult of times and not lean on what we can come up with ourselves. The main thing is to remember that Jesus is our Lord and Savior and with greatest compassion will watch over us and take care of us. The main thing is to put fear aside. Fear of not having enough, not being able to provide, not knowing what today will bring, and lay our fear and faults at the foot of the cross. Because if we're honest, all of us have too often missed the main thing lately, huh? We've missed opportunities to let others know that Jesus is the main thing. We've worried ourselves about tomorrow, forgetting that Jesus, well, he already has tomorrow in his hands. Sure, we have many things to be concerned about right now. There's work, starting school, virtual or face-to-face, -face, staying healthy, staying safe, protests, riots, looting, shootings, and well, the list goes on. But with all the distractions, Jesus, his love, his forgiveness, his compassion are still the main thing. Let's work and pray to keep the main thing, the main thing in our lives. Let's not be driven by fear, by distractions, but driven to Jesus. For he is always the main thing. And let's be sure to keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. And now may the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting at peace with the main thing who is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our worship now continues as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our worship continues as we hear an anthem entitled, Like the Golden Sun Ascending, performed by Ryan Gurgle. Like the golden sun ascending Breaking through the gloom of night On the earth its glory spending So that darkness takes to flight Thus my Jesus from the grave And as tears will dreadful cave Rose triumphant Easter Have died for my trans. 
transgression, all my sins on you were laid. You have won for me salvation, on the cross my debt was paid. From the grave I shall arise, and shall meet you in the skies. Death itself is transitory, I shall lift my head in glory. Grant me grace, O blessed Savior, and your Holy Spirit send, that my life and my behavior may be pleasing to that I may not fall again into death in pit and pain, whence by grace you have retrieved me, and from which you have relieved me. For the joy your advent gave me, for your gospel's grace, supper and a word, for your death and bitter storm, for your resurrection born. Lord, I thank you and extol you, and in hand I shall We pray responsively in thanksgiving for our daily bread. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. You make grass grow for the cattle and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens the hearts of people everywhere oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. You entered our world as the bread of life, Jesus our Lord. We praise you for life-giving manna from heaven, forgiveness, reconciliation with God, peace of conscience. You bless us with your word and sacrament, imparting health to our souls and strength to our hands, that we might serve you and our fellow human beings. Now forgive us, Lord, for shallow thankfulness, for dull content with warmth and sheltered care, for songs of praise for worldly wealthiness, while of your richer gifts we're unaware. Open our eyes to see your love's intent, to know with minds and hearts its depth and height. Let thankful days in loving labor spent reflect the truly Christ-like life and light. With trusting hearts, we bring before you our greatest needs in the prayer you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go now in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and grant you peace.
We're so glad that you joined us for worship online today, and particularly some of you who are worshiping from a long distance away. We're always interested in where our viewers are worshiping. And if you could leave a comment below online, we'd really appreciate that. Thank you also for your support of this ministry. Your offerings make this ongoing ministry online possible and allow us to bring that good news of Jesus, the bread of life from heaven to the world. May God continue to bless you as you follow him.